Hello and welcome to Deep Dives with New Perspectives. I'm Michael Bartlett. And I'm Mary Lynn LeBlanc. Hi, Michael. Hi, Mary Lynn. How are you doing with all of these energies going on? <laughs> I'm in overwhelm, total overwhelm. And uh, yes, yeah, you know. It kind of feels Actually, almost like this, it almost feels like this boiling pot syndrome. It's like, you know, I just think, you know, we've been all soaking like a, you know, have you ever heard the boiling frog syndrome? You put a frog into a pot of water and you slowly turn the heat up and it just keeps adjusting itself until it'll actually boil itself to death. You know, we do that in life, right? We keep adjusting ourselves and adjusting ourselves <laughs> until finally like something has to give. And, you know, and that's like kind of like we're, you know, the, this big pressure cooker is kind of what's getting ready to happen in the sky here coming up, right? With the Saturn Mars opposition squaring off with Uranus as a T square. I mean, if that isn't a pressure cooker, what is? Exactly. Well, the Saturn, the Saturn Mars is just all of that activity and and making it it seems to be like static or not moving much uh, and so it's just um actually i'm going to welcome the uranus even though it's pretty close right now because this is thursday you're talking about where it's just uranus is just gonna say um <laughs> yeah bye bye <laughs> or <laughs> or hello. <laughs> this T-square energy. But you know, the thing about T-squares is that one needs to focus energy on the what we call the empty house, the house that's not got that's not involved in the aspect. And and of course, we're I mean houses could be anywhere with everybody, but we're talking about Mars and Leo opposite Saturn and Aquarius. And they're both in a square aspect to Uranus and Taurus. And so the sign opposite Taurus, because we're talking about planets, you know, connected in that, in, in oppositions and squares is Scorpio. And, and so Scorpio is where we need to go. And what's Scorpio all about? And Scorpio is all about, you know, looking deeply within oneself <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> for where the the stuff you don't want to smell is <laughs> and dealing with it and, and, and dealing with it but that that's a kind of a negative expression uh, uh, of it in some ways because I, I natally have a t-square so I've dealt with this all my life and the empty area for my chart hap, where the T-square doesn't have an outlet kind of thing is, uh, and the, well, it could be a grand cross if we call, count Chiron, but in the early days, uh, mm. we didn't know Chiron was there. It, it's Leo, the sign of Leo, and it's in the area that has to do with my, uh, my friendships, my connections to people, the 11th house. And when I, every time I reflect on T-squares, I go back to this because I, I know this energy. And basically the relief is my engagement with friends. I've done that since childhood. They relieved for me personally, the tension. And right now the Scorpio area in my chart has to do with my personal stuff, the things I, I have, et cetera. And what, and you, we won't go into that specifically, but what I'm dealing with right now, and it's, it is my stuff and relief comes from that. So wherever Scorpio is in your chart, deal with that area and there will be there will be, as a result of it, there will be relief. When you talk about relief, part of it actually is release, right? Because with Scorpio, the Scorpio has that next octave up from Cancer, which wants to hoard and keep onto things. Scorpio wants to hold onto things because there's an emotional attachment, you know, probably of some kind. But at the end of the day, if Scorpio doesn't let go of things, it gets really constipated. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I wonder how, how how much letting go. I mean, it's sort of like diarrhea. I mean, I I cannot tell you how many trips I have made to the uh, the cons not the consignment, the resale places, the Goodwill, the Salvation Army, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yes. Uh, the, the letting go is a, a really important part and also to the waste station you know nobody nobody's going to use this well, not even you so I, mean, I wonder with that because it's almost like you know, it, it, it seems like you know when the longer that we hold on to things maybe the more um the more powerful the release might be, right? For those individuals. I mean, because we're talking about the fixed signs, the fixed exactly. signs exactly. really hold on in a way that is against every single person in the planet, right? You know, they could just have that one person, you know, whether they're a Leo or they're Aquarian, you know, or Scorpio or Taurus, they can sit there and just make whatever idea they want and hold that at the odds of everyone else. Right. Well, I think that just like putting putting whatever that is in a pressure cooker, and and not taking not releasing the energy in there. Right. 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 You better have a strong, strong metal pot. <laughs> it's funny because I almost see like a dragon inside of a metal pot, and it's just going bump, and it's bumping it out, and there's a bump on this side, and then all this, you know, all these bumps, you know, because it's like. Is trying to break out of this really tight box. And that's, you know, again, this is what these energies are, right? With this, this T-score is this energy of like, this kind of requiring an adjustment. It requires us to do something. I mean, when it comes to squares and oppositions, we can't help but get engaged with them. The square kinds of comes out of nowhere, wax us, it's Uranus, which is even more challenging in that regard. And then we have that, you know, the kind of the bullies, you know, Saturn and Mars facing off one another. And, you know, and, and, you know, I guess if there's any kind of a saving grace is because Saturn's retrograde in Aquarius, which maybe gives a little bit of an opportunity for taking a step back and saying, Hey, wait a minute, I really need to think about if this is the right way of dealing with the situation. Mars yep. and Leo isn't going to act that way, right? Mars and Leo is like, you know what, this is what I feel. This is what I want. This is what I, what's going to happen. Yeah. It's like, on a soapbox on the corner telling everybody <laughs> what, what's going to happen or what they're going to do. <laughs> I'm going to be great again. I'm, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. <laughs> right. And so, but the thing in that is like, you know, then, like you said, you know, we have to step into that place of Scorpio and it's like, okay, well, what is what is the BS that I'm feeding myself or feeding other people that isn't really true? And that is in the way of me really being able to, you know, be my own right authority, handle my inner relationships with people correctly. I mean, you know, with the pandemic going on, with all of the polarization that's been going on in our country and around the world, I mean, I don't think a lot, many of us are feeling very safe and secure in ourselves and in our relationships with other people. A lot of relationships are even changing and, you know, some people, you know, as it is, you know, they're stepping back farther away, you know, and don't really want to engage because of the losses that they're experiencing or other things that are going on in their lives. Mm. Yeah, it was, that makes you think about how is this happening on a collective level? Because, you know, like Mars would be my individual self, me, versus the authority, the status quo, what, you know, what's, what's how is life organized around me you know what's the government saying what's the business saying what are these companies saying etc and uh, you know it's interesting what just flipped in my mind was something and i think it was in the new york times this morning uh, about uh, uh one of the court decisions it was a i don't know what kind of court it wasn't the supreme court where a judge threw out the case uh against Facebook and it I didn't read all the details but it was a little my personal reaction was disturbing you know in one case saying they waited too long to prove these things but you know it still has to do with all the antitrust stuff against some of these huge um 
companies, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 it and that what we're saying right now. I mean, there's nothing specifically judicial about these placements of these planets that we're talking about, although, you know, Saturn is the authority figure, and in that this particular case, a court, a judge, and in in Aquarius, which does have to do with government structures, going retrograde, rethinking. I mean, my immediate rethought was all those judges that uh, Trump put in that. This was an Obama probably, judge. It was an Obama it judge. It was an Obama place judge. Ooh, I didn't see, I didn't really get it. Which is a little it. bit even more frustrating about it. But, you know, but it also leads into the idea of what, you know, what that helps remind me though, is like, you know, what our, what the Supreme Court was. We had all this concern about the Supreme Court being more socially conservative, right? And yet, you know, the ways they, in which they've been ruling lately have actually been supportive of individuals in a way that we wouldn't really normally expect from a more conservative viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's the, uh, but it's their interpretation of the laws. And this is where, I guess, where they're grounded, you know, like being a constitutionalist and in the strict form of interpreting the constitution as it was initially uh, set down. And when, in some cases, it, it seems like they're doing that without considering how society has evolved. And I would use, I'd use the gun issue as a, a real common one. I mean, you know, it was so that there would be, a, you know, a people ready to form a militia should there be a problem. Well, we have National Guards, we have armies, navies, et cetera. You know, individuals don't necessarily have to protect the country or their state at this point, but that has been stretched. So it, there's this kind of like, it, it's sort of like most of us do this with some issues where we take the, the, our preferences and we interpret a law or a rule according to our preferences when there's these other interpretations that in that same method would have validity as well, even though they are not in congruent with what you know, one is believing in. Well, yeah. law, you know, law actually is, is all based on precedence, right? So it's basically like if, if one can get a certain law slightly changed, like say for abortion, for instance, is, you know, getting to name the fetus a child as opposed to a fetus puts it into a different category. So therefore, you know, an abortion then becomes murder as opposed to, you know, an abortion. You know, these are like, they're very subtle ways of doing this and then if those laws change, then you're building upon these things. But, you know, I think with all these energies that are going on and, you know, at the end of July, we've got Jupiter going back into Aquarius. You know, I think we're going to start seeing kind of like a review, you know, what are our belief structures? Well, how are we looking at society? How are we taking care of one another? What is the right thing? Um, I, I think, you know, I, I don't think, I just know that we're, you know, we're heading for quite a reckoning and, and I think all of us are wondering exactly how it's going to look as it unfolds. Yeah, yeah. One well, also this going back to the Mars Uranus, you know, it's, it's that first quarter phase that is a, an action oriented phase, but, you know, it has a sense of something of worth needing to come about but there's not the clarity of exactly how that will look. So, you know, the, and, and at this, re, you know, in terms of the, po the political scene or the government scene, just, you know, like Biden's uh, uh, infrastructure plans, et cetera, as they negotiate their way through this, this kind of legislation, things, things morph. And, you know, it's, it, there, there is the, the initial vision is, is shifted. And that's where, you know, in terms of something innovative coming in, uh, we're at a point where the action being taken it may, it may well, pro, mo, most likely will deviate from the initial vision. That's part of that energy. It, 
the most, but you know, in terms of the, the Mars Saturn opposition in this T square, um, you know, it's like Saturn is, this, oh, wait, this is the way the structure is. So, you know, maybe we can't do this, or these are the limitations. The, the, this, this is, this is the structure in which you must operate and what's being defined. Whereas Mars, you know, Mars wants to run with an idea and doesn't mind deviating, doesn't mind jumping over hurdles, et cetera. So in some ways that dynamic is sort of like a, a stop go kind of action. And in order for it to give any kind of rational uh, quality to whatever's going on in our lives, one has to be ready to say, oh, I can do this right now, but just that part of it, I need to, I need to refer back to what the structure is that I really, you know, I have to rethink the structure of uh, where I'm going with this, sort of like if you're going to rearrange your home and maybe add on an addition or something. And, and so you have to kind of think about, uh, wait a minute, we wanted to make, we wanted to put a window here because of this, this, and this. So you, and then, and then you go, but that's probably not going to work. So we need to revise the structure. So there's that kind of back and forth energy that goes on with the Mars Saturn opposition. But I think what kind of changes it a little bit in that way and what maybe would allow for, I mean, what I like what you're saying is, is there's a space in it, which maybe normally I would think that maybe might not be there, but I think because Saturn's retrograde during this time and it's in Aquarius, I think it gives a greater opportunity for the review or for, because I always think of like Aquarius having that periscope ability, you know, it gives that ability to kind of step back and look at things from a larger perspective. But the thing is, it always bothers me whenever I see Uranus and Mars in relationship, especially in a challenging relationship like this square or like in an opposition or even a conjunction, is I just always think of accidents, you know, it's just that thing that's coming out of nowhere that just slaps you upside the head in a way that that just is m merciless. You know, it's, you know, you're driving down, minding your own business, and all of a sudden you don't realize that there's a banana peel and you slip and, you know, you, you break your tailbone or, you know, you, you know, create some kind of damage that is a lot more um, profound than we want to really give it credit to. So I think with the Saturn, I think it gives us this opportunity to say, okay, you know what, let me be a little more careful in the way I step here. <laughs> I'm kind of laughing in a way. Because I have a, a wide Mars, Uranus, they're like 10 degrees apart conjunction. <laughs> and Are you a klutz? <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, okay. not I'm not. I'm not a klutz. But the image as you were talking that came up was one that happened in my childhood. I don't even think, I might have been five years old. I don't think I was in school yet. But um there was this area where my older siblings and other siblings in our neighborhood would go to play hide and seek or kick the can at night, you know, once it was dark out because it was easier to stay hidden. And it was, it was in this area where there was this old, um, this old ice house or, or something where there were these old, the old ice trucks, there used to be trucks that would bring ice to the ice boxes before refrigerators. And this was in that transitionary time where you know, some people still had ice boxes. We had a refrigerator, I remember that, but because I remember what happened to it. But, but in any event, um, I hid in the old ice truck and somebody was coming to look. And so I started, I, I was crawling out and started to run down. They had a ramp on the side. And what I didn't see was there was a, a square opening in the ramp with razors on the side that oh kept the ice, yes, 
I ran down into that. I mean, it just, you know, scratched the skin off of the, my outer legs. <laughs> to You're me that- lucky you didn't take a limb off. <laughs> Or lose a nose or an ear or an eye or something. Oh my God. That, it, was, it, was, it was very, it was, it was very, it was, well, it was not a big square. I mean, it was, you know, I was a kid, but it, it was maybe 10 inches, but oh, okay. you know, whatever. And, um, and it was that kind of thing of, of, of taking an action that totally surprises one. And this is in my eighth house. So you have that kind of scorpionic energy, even though it wasn't in Scorpio, it was in Taurus, and that's why it affected my skin. <laughs> and, and, Life-threatening, and, right? I mean, these energies- Yes, that's what I'm saying, yes. Life-threatening. Yes, you know, yes. Th Because I think the goal isn't really necessarily to, it, it's to threaten the ego to wake up. I think is the thing there's a, there's some sort of a, an awakening that's required with these energies there's something where there's like an aha that if you aren't getting it yeah. you're gonna get it look where you're running <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was probably uh the but yes i will i will say at other times it's more of a psychological uh Thing than something else but that was that was kind of a graphic image to me of what you were describing uh in terms of that energy yeah so you know i think as much as we can this month month i really recommend you know looking before leaping <laughs> you know don't slide down cool. towards razor blade <laughs> or don't slide down the sloop because you don't really know what might be at the other end of it you know take it exactly. around walk around the outside of it make notes question yourself maybe you know with decisions any major decisions are coming up with all the outer planets being retrograde too just say hey you know what i need a moment to think about this i don't really want to be heading for the razors <laughs> come to a full stop at a corner at an intersection don't don't do that crawl thing <laughs> you never I know a road rage and i have to admit i i'm you know i'm i'm one that i mean i really feel this is up for me too because there's just something about when someone is just you know not paying attention in front of me and there's you know and then there's space in front of them it's very frustrating but i know i really have to learn to like just say hey, you know what it's okay this is only going to take a few minutes um, but we have to move out of that instinctual fear, you know, that that's, I think where Scorpio really shows us. And maybe that Uranus on the other side helps us awaken that. It's like, you know what, hey, you know, instead of like feeling boxed and caged in, how can we find the freedom in it? You know, maybe turn some music on, maybe, you know, um, mull over something that you've been thinking about that you need to kind of come to a resolution about rather than trying to push through that thing. I know that's what I'm going to be working on this next month. Otherwise, I'm going to have to lock myself in my room and be away from people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Well, what, whatever. I, I, I'm not quite sure what else we can say about those three little culprits uh, other than, you know, Pluto being one of the rulers of Scorpio, which is kind of the outlet. Uh, be willing. If you're being called to make some major shift, change in your life, be willing to go through it because um, that, you know, it's, that's the area of, when you do that area, wherever Scorpio is in this T-square thing. That's the area that will bring you, ultimately will bring you the relief from the tension. Uh, yeah. And if people need some guidance, how can they reach you during this time? Um, Mary Lynn LeBlanc at <laughs> gmail.com. Moonwiseastrology.com is my website and there's contact information on that. People can reach me at cormichael.com. I'm available for readings, talking guidance, um, you know, whatever we need right now to help support everyone. Um, you know, that's what that's what we're here for. So 
breathe as much as possible, love, take a break and be peaceful. Blessings to you all out there. All right. Bye for now.